Now, next up, we can have a look at Laravel 10's new process facade, which is really cool and super flexible. Okay, so have a look. I will import that here. And yeah, if you're not familiar, Symfony's process component allows you to trigger or invoke any kind of external process, like a command line script. But of course, the process facade wraps that and then adds a bunch of bells and whistles and conveniences and test helpers. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to run a new command and let's keep it nice and simple. How about list the current files in the, uh, the current directory or in the working path directory? And then I can grab the output of that command and let's simply return it from this route and then we'll have a look in the browser. And yeah, there we go, it works. And granted, I get it, it's a little hard to parse here because of the formatting. But sure enough, you can see in the base directory, we have a favicon, we have index.php, we have robots.txt. And in fact, why don't we just run it from the command line? Uh, I like this tool called httpy that you can install through brew. Uh, and I can say, make a get request to laravel10.test. And there we go. So this is something uh, a little more familiar to you, right? This is the files within uh, my public directory. Okay, cool. So let's take it a little further. What if I try to run a command that ultimately is gibberish? Something like this. All right, well, if I switch back and I give it a refresh, then this might be a little confusing because I don't see anything at all. All right, so as it turns out, and as you can imagine, well, when you run a command like this, in fact, let's just try it directly from the command line. And yeah, there we go, we get commands not found. So in this case, because it failed, the output was written to standard error, right? And the Xcode is probably, I can't remember, 120, 125, 126. Why don't we have a look ourselves? I can check the Xcode by calling the exit code method. Okay, so once again, we come back and we give it a refresh and yeah, okay, 127. So 127 stands for command not found. Okay, very useful. But on top of that, why don't we just check to see if there is error output. So remember on the command line, there's a difference between uh, standard output and then error specific output. So in this case, if I give it another refresh, yeah, now we don't get a blank screen. We can see the output that was written uh, or passed to standard error. Okay, very cool. Now, rather than checking a specific exacode, yeah, often you'll simply want to determine whether or not the command was executed or invoked successfully. So for example, we could tweak this to say, if a uh, process run was successful, then once again, it worked, you know, however you need to proceed. Otherwise return, it failed. Okay, just as a, a silly example. So if I come back and give it a refresh, well, of course, the command was not run successfully, so we take this pathway. But otherwise, if we once again list all of the files, come back, well, that was successful, so we take this pathway. Okay, cool. Moving on, there's a lot more to show here. Uh, what about um, maybe more long running processes? So what if we were to say process, uh, run, and I don't know, what should we do here? Maybe, yeah, why don't we build Vite? Okay, so you know what? I probably need to do this as part of a command. So something like this and then grab the output, right? But yeah, why don't we switch this over to an actual console command? So within routes, we can go into console and I can quickly define one here. We'll call it test, get rid of purpose. And then yeah, here is where I can trigger that logic. Okay, so back to our routes file, grab that, close it out, and paste it in. Okay, so now when I run PHP artisan test, that's actually going to pass that through to npm run build and then generate the output. And then I will pass that output to the info method uh, for your command. All right, let's give it a shot and see what happens. PHP artisan test. We wait a couple seconds because remember to build Vite probably takes two to four seconds and then we get the results. So again, just notice that until that completes, you're waiting two, three, four seconds. In this case, actually three seconds. Uh, but yeah, still, that's pretty cool. But now for, for more long running processes, you might want to uh, you might want to provide some feedback. You might want it to be asynchronous. It just depends, right? So let's give this a shot. Instead, 
of waiting for it to complete, I can pass a closure as the second argument here, something like this. And this will then accept the type of the output, again, uh, standard error, standard out, and then we'll have, of course, the output itself. Okay, so now have a look at this. Okay, so now this is just a little bit different. We're still running the command, but now we are fetching any output as it occurs, as a stream, and then we, we throw that to the console. Okay, so let's give this another shot, and you'll see a slight difference here. Yeah, notice it feels a little more uh, as if you are interacting uh, with the console directly. You get it as a stream. Here's the output as it comes in, yeah. Compare that to what we had before. Yeah, that's right. So we run it, and yeah, once again, with this approach, you'd have to wait that full three seconds. The buffer fills up before you see any output at all, and that's good to know. Okay, but what about especially long running processes? Maybe it takes 30 seconds or a minute, and you want to provide some kind of feedback as that command is being run. Well, uh, let me show you something. If I click on this run method, notice that we can provide a callable, which is what we did uh, earlier, right? Then let's see where this is being executed. So you don't really need to follow this, but sometimes it's useful to see that when you call that run method, Behind the scenes, if a callable is passed, that's just deferring to a start method and then a wait method. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that. If I switch back to the console, that means I could say process start npm run build, and then I could say uh, process, and then I could say process wait, and then I could do uh, process output. So this would be another way that we could prepare that. So if I give it a run, one, two, three, we wait for the output, and then we, uh, we render it all at once. Okay, so that means while we're waiting, maybe we could do something. For example, I could say, while the process uh, is running, do something, you know? We could say info, and again, whatever needs to be done. In this case, I'll just say working to give you an idea. So I imagine if I run this, I'm gonna have a full screen of working uh, info messages. And yeah, there we go. But at the very end, once it completes, uh, we get the output. Or we could say down here, you know, info, all done. Whatever you need to do. So we can run this again. One, two, lots of working messages. And then finally, all done. Okay, and of course, if you want, you could uh, you could sleep for a second, you probably don't want to do that. But again, it just depends. So we get one working, two, three, all done. And that's how we can monitor things like that. Okay, really good to know. Okay, so what else? Um, I don't want to overwhelm you too much here for a What's New series. Uh, we should probably dedicate a whole video to this. We could do a deep dive into it. There's things like concurrency and process pooling and, and lots of fun stuff. But why don't we wrap up with a quick discussion around testability, which is one of the key features here. So let's start from scratch. And I can say uh, process, and like many of Laravel's components, there is a fake method on the facade. So now we're saying, eh, let's just fake the process. Anything you pass here, don't worry about. Don't actually execute. So if we give this a run, you'll notice that it completes instantly because we aren't actually deferring to that command. Okay, so that's, that's incredibly useful if you're running a test that defers to the process facade, but you don't actually want to execute the command. Instead, just fake it. Or there might be situations where you want to fake only certain commands, but not others. So for example, uh, let's do this. Let's have two here. One of them, once again, just defers to list the files or maybe git log or something like that. In this case, uh, process fake would fake every single command. So you'll see this completes instantly. However, you could also just say, no, fake git log and have that return a fake git log, whatever you want your fake response to be. But anything not listed here as part of the array will be triggered uh, as usual. So in this case, we'll have a fake git log, but then it will also, as you see here, uh, run the, the full npm run build command. And you don't see any output here, again, because I didn't show any. 
And then actually let's do the exact same thing here. Okay, that'll make it a little more clear. So we run it and here is our git log fakery, but then we run the actual npm run build command. All right, good to know. And then what else? Um, because we are faking the process component here, we now have various assertions that we can write on top of that. So for example, let's keep it nice and simple here. Let's just say something like that, you know, list the files. Okay, so if we were to fake that, a fake list, I can then say process assert and notice the various assertions. Well, assert that uh, list the files was executed. And of course, in this case, it was. So if we run this, it works. But why don't we assert that something else ran, like git log? Well, in this case, of course, that's going to fail, as you see there. So if I scroll up, failed asserting that false is true, which is what we want. And yeah, then of course we have others like assert didn't run or assert that it ran a certain number of times, most of the things that you might expect here. And that's really gonna be useful within your tests. Yeah, but otherwise the key thing to, to know here, at least initially, is that there's a new process facade in Laravel 10 that allows you to run any sort of command that you might need to trigger uh, programmatically from a PHP file. You can then run the output method to get the standard output. You can fetch the exit code. You can check if it ran successfully. You can check if it failed. You can check, uh, besides the output, as we learned, the error output. There's a lot of flexibility here. And once again, it's really easy to use. All right, let's keep going. Onward to the next episode.